Hello everyone and welcome to my channel on the hook crochet where we talk about wearable crochet style and let's find out what's been on the hook. We'll get to that in just a second but I want to wish you a happy Labor Day. I assume you're watching this on Labor Day because I'm going to release it here in a few minutes. Uh, it's right about lunchtime so hopefully you will get this on Labor Day. And I wanted to just briefly say what Labor Day means. And a lot of people don't know. They think it's about the military and all that, but it's not. It is a day that is set aside to pay tribute to the American worker and that all they've contributed to our wonderful society. We live in the greatest country on earth. So we need to appreciate our workers as well. So this was originally started as a day uh, set aside uh, it started in the 1800s and it has caught on. It's the first Monday in September when we celebrate the American worker. So, so if you are an American worker, congratulate yourself. And if you know an American worker, congratulate them. Say happy Labor Day today. Those of you who watch my channel might have seen my release yesterday of Millie's Lace. And I'm actually wearing that today because I wanted to show you how it looked with a tan tank top underneath. Yesterday I was wearing a black tank top and I wanted to show you how the lace looks with a little bit lighter uh, tank top underneath. And this is, this is how it looks. It's a lot more visible. The lace is much more visible with a lighter color underneath. Um, it kind of shows off the lace. Of course, I don't have anything on under the sleeve part, but just my skin showing through. Whether you um, have darker skin or light skin, um, you'd be able to see the lace there. But I just wanted to show um, how this would look um, just in a full tank of tan color. So um, just wanted to show you that. I love this top. I know I've said it before, but this is made with uh, Vita Lana yarn from Knit Crate and right now they don't have this colorway. It's called Tapenade, but um, it's a it's called Dream, which is the base, I assume. Uh, it's 329 yards on the hank and it's 70% uh, superwash wool, 20% silk, and 10% cashmere. And it is so squishy and soft. I really like it. But you could make this top in any yarn you choose. And it doesn't have to be very drapey. Um, the lace actually makes it a little drapier because there is uh, a lot of space in between the stitches. Uh, I took the lace all the way up the front and I did not lace the back. And I'll show you the back. I don't know if you can see this, but this is the back of Millie's lace. And there's no lace on the back, but you are certainly welcome to do that. And it's an option in the pattern, as I've said before. But I'm enjoying wearing it. It's very soft and today is cool day here in Chattanooga. We're having a very nice day. Yesterday was very nice temperature. So I uh, wore it around yesterday as well. And uh, I'm really enjoying wearing this. I'm starting to like the fingering weight. And this is actually fingering weight. The fingering weight wools, uh, especially if there's something mixed with it like a, a nylon or a silk and in this case silk and cashmere which this came in a knit crate box i would have never known to buy this but i uh, actually purchased a couple of extras so this top the way it's made with the kind of long sleeves the sleeves are below the elbow and they're full they're not i'll hold them out like this they're not fitted sleeves so they take more yarn of course you're crocheting across all the way across to the other side and the the rows do get very long in my case because the sleeves were long you could certainly make short sleeves in this sweater it would be very cute to make short sleeves and then put a lace band like this at the bottom of the short sleeve so uh, there are a myriad of ways you could make this, and I talk about that in the pattern. Um, it's conversational style, which I always use, and I like to let y'all know what else you can do with your pattern. And if you watch my videos, I also go over that. Um, different ways that you can um, change it up, make your second or third Millie's Lace, which I plan to do. I already have one in the works, and I'll show you that when I start uh, showing my works in progress, but I just wanted to, to show you this. I'm wearing a Sashka bracelet. Love it. Love it. I'm actually uh, accenting this today in black. I'm wearing black earrings, a black bracelet. Um, I am a supporter of the Sashka company. They have uh, 
a wonderful idea of women overseas who need to make money for their families and they crochet these bracelets in beads. Uh, it's just the most amazing thing. There's a link down in the description box. You can go and watch the ladies make their bracelets. Um, and, and I support them. I buy bracelets every now and then. And uh, this one happened to match my military look, which is uh, kind of gold and black and green. So I thought I would wear one of my bracelets today. So let's now move on to the works in progress part of my video. Um, I want to show you three different works in progress today and Crystal's going to help me with one of those in just a moment. First of all, I want to show you the progress I've made on my Millie's Lace top in the orange. Well, it's called Pigment. This is 34% cotton, 35% linen, 19% lyocell, and 11% nylon, 351 yards on the hank and it's machine wash gentle gentle cycle which is amazing lay flat but it's a um, a yarn that is made in an interlock kind of an interlock method if you can see that it's not wound around like this yarn this yarn is wound this yarn is kind of an interlock yarn it's it crochets a little bit differently but it's very easy to crochet it does not split at all and this is from Audine Wool's and Knit Crate, of course, when TL Yarn Crafts uh, sponsored them a couple of months ago, I guess. And I really like this. I only had two hanks of it, so I ordered an extra hank. This, and I started to say this back in my where, what I'm wearing segment, but this top required three hanks of this. And this is what I had left of the last hank. Just, you know, just... 50 yards maybe, maybe 55, 60 yards, I don't know how many, but very little yarn was left. And I wasn't playing yarn chicken, I knew I'd have enough to do my edgings around the bottom and the sleeves, but I just uh, never expected to use three full hanks of this. However, that's okay because I have some other plans and I'll show you those in my next regular video. Um, I'm going to uh, show you some new yarns that I've bought and um, I'm just real excited about starting new projects and I have so many whips I really need to stop doing that but I just can't help it I would love to start new things and show y'all what things look like what crochet looks like in certain yarns so I uh, just probably continue doing that so this is the progress I've made on my Millie's Lace in the interlock cotton yarn and it's it's growing. I've put a wide band around the bottom in single crochet and the rest of the um, lace pattern and the, the pattern has worked. In this particular sweater I used a J hook for the fabric. I chained up with a K hook and I made the fabric with a J. In this in this yarn I chained up with an L hook and I'm crocheting in a K hook. So um, just for your information, the K hook is a 6.5 millimeter. So that's what I'm using for this particular sweater. And it's going to be very nice. It's not gonna to be too loose. It's not gonna to be uh, too wide. It's probably going to be, well, it is gonna be the same size as the green sweater. Now the green sweater, uh, Millie's Lace, has eight inches of ease. So I had two on the front, two on the back on each side, which made eight inches of ease. It's not a fitted sweater. It has uh, quite a bit of play in it, actually. See all that? Um, but it makes the sweater more comfortable and a little bit easier to wear. It's not clinging anywhere. So that's one thing I really liked about this particular pattern. And also that I made it from fingering yarn. And I've made some other things from fingering yarn. And they do take longer if you're a crocheter or if you're a knitter as well. But uh, I don't knit, and that's another thing I wanted to tell y'all. I would love to start at least one knitting project. I don't know what it will be yet. I'm researching uh, knitting needles, and I want to go ahead and buy a set so that any size that I need, I'll have, and that's my focus. I want to uh, do a good job and get started on it, and um, I'll probably watch a lot of YouTubes, and it may take me a whole two seasons to start a project, but I have some knitting patterns um, that I've saved, some simple patterns that I have a folder for, 
and I would really like to do that. So if you have any suggestions about needles, let me know. I would like to do interchangeable needles with the, the wire in between. Um, it just seems like all the knitters are using those now. And the sticks are kind of hard to maneuver for me. Um, it seems like a lot of work to swing those big sticks around um, rather than use the smaller ones and then have the wire hold your stitches. So um, if, you, if you all knitters out there, if you knitters out there have a, a suggestion for me, I would love to hear it. Now second on my works in progress is a shawl that I'm making and it's, it's hopefully going to be very beautiful. I've worked on it quite a bit this weekend and I wanted to show you the progress that I've made. This is a, an original pattern. I am making it in kind of an odd way and I hope you all uh, understand what I'm doing here, but I'm starting the, the shawl from a, uh, from a ring right here, from a ring, and then you will grow the shawl bigger and bigger and bigger. And as you can see, the shawl is getting bigger around the edge and I'm shaping it like this. And then when you put it on, the bottom will be nice and ruffled. It'll be beautiful and I'll have a nice edging on it. Now I'm using these two colors together and they'll be alternated or maybe a solid piece of this diamond color um, that will go here. And then I'm also using lots of different stitches. I don't know if you can see that. I'm using lots of stitches that are odd. There, there's an odd stitch that I'm using here and um, as much as I've used it, I've really learned to do it quickly. So that'll be a fun thing for the pattern as well. I will be releasing this, I don't know, in the next couple weeks. I hope to finish my um, shawl and model it for you and see what you think. But I'm really starting to like it because the bottom is going to be beautiful. It's going to have a special edging on it too, not just plain like this. This is just part of the shawl. So I'm making this out of Sugared Sport by Knit Crate. I've shown these before on my channel. This is the color Diamond. This is the color Lapis, L-A-P-I-S. And those are two colors that I saw I thought would really be beautiful together. So I'm creating this shawl for you and hopefully we'll have it finished before too long. That's my second work in progress that I'm actively working on right now. Crystal is over here helping me model my new top-down sweater and I am working on this too uh, in addition to the other two whips this week and hopefully we'll make some good progress on this. I have another one to show you as well. This is the beginning of a top-down sweater project. It is made with the Mandala watercolors yarn and this is a bulky size yarn. I really like it. It's a beautiful color. This is turning out really nicely. It's self-striping. It's not extremely ugly striping. It's pretty striping. They're all the same tonal colors. So the dark brown is actually mixed up in here and I don't know if you can see that, but there's some dark brown in there. I don't know how that happened. It just appeared. But anyway, this is a top-down pattern and let me see if I can get her up here. Uh, the raglan sleeves are here and here and I'm trying to make it adjustable and you start the neck with a certain measurement that you want and then if you follow the pattern it will grow correctly for your size and that's my focus to write a pattern that can be used in all different sizes and if you want a boxy sweater or a fitted sweater that would be your choice you won't have to do stitch counts um, I think I ask you to do one just right in here to be sure that you have the right number of stitches but other than that it's not it doesn't have a lot of stitch counts. The, uh, the sweater is, it grows to fit you. And that's the focus of all my patterns. They are actually designed so that you can make the pattern fit you. So this is the back, and this is my little stitch marker showing the right side, but this is the back. I'm trying to make it seamless. Now here's where I started the last row. I've gotten to this point on the, the last row that I'm working on right here. And what I'm going to do is grow the sweater down to where the two edges of the raglan sleeve at least be horizontally the same measurement. Then we know that we can add chains in between there or not, depending on how large you want your sweater. If you have um, quite a few chains, you can make your sweater boxy. And you, you crochet straight down from there, and then you decide on the length as you're working on your sweater. So um, if you want to add sleeves, you can do that, or you can just have the cap sleeves like 
the ranunculus sweater. I don't know if you've seen that. It's a knitted sweater, very beautifully done. And um, the designer just stopped right here where the edge of the yoke is. And it's a winter sweater, so you can wear a top under it and the sleeve show. It's really cute. I really like it. And if I was a good knitter, I would just knit one of those. <laughs> but I might uh, design a crochet pattern that's similar to it. Maybe that would be good. So Crystal has modeled the um, bulky size, large neck version of my sweater. Now, I've made some changes to it, and I have another prototype to show you. Now, Crystal is wearing the other prototype that I'm working on. Um, I'm hoping that I will get a long way with this. Um, I have the yoke done on Crystal here, and of course you have arms that come out here, so it's not going to hang down like that. But I'm pretty much to the point where I'm going to add just a few chains here and continue down and see how well the yoke fits. So I'm making this from shimmery uh, yarn from Lion Brand. It's a bulky weight yarn, 219 yards on the cake. And I have ordered extra cakes and I do have them. So I want to plan to finish this, uh, even if not just for myself, but I'm hoping to finish the pattern and make it available to everyone who might want to make a top-down sweater. This is uh, a shorter, neckline, um, a shorter ribbed actually. This is a shorter ribbed area right here at the top. I found that the other one came up a little bit too high on me and of course the option for you when you make one of these from my pattern would be to make the rib as tall as you want it. So you would look at it and say is that too tall for me? I'm not sure I like it. And you can do that for the first few rows um, working this way on the rib. So the measurement of the actual neckline is wider here than the other one. The other one was much more tight up here at the neck. And again, that's your choice, how far away you want to have the neck fall from your actual neck side right here. So um, I don't like things up around my neck like that unless they're very, very soft. Shimmery is a soft yarn, but it is not the softest yarn I've ever worked with. I do love the look though. It has some beautiful shine to it and I've enjoyed working with it. I've um, done some extra different kinds of stitches here and I hope you like them. Um, they're certainly optional. What I do want is to be able to produce a pattern that y'all can uh, make to fit you and not have to count hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of stitches. Um, that's my focus on this particular project and just wanted to show you the progress I've made on it so far. Now to my unboxing of my crochet surprise box for this month. I um, want to show you what this is. I know a lot of you have been excited to see what this was. This is my unboxing. I'm sure there have been others already, but we have to wait till the fifth of the month to do that. So this was the first opportunity I've had, and we will be selecting a giveaway winner in just a couple of minutes. But I want to show you what's in the actual box. This is, of course, the um, the folder that you get. It's really nice paper. It's beautifully done. But Crochet Surprise owners send me a box every month, and I give it away. So they are the sponsors of this giveaway this, this week. The tea of the month is Strawberry Sencha, and this is the tea that comes in the box. And it's very, very good. It's Jasmine Pearl Tea. Also in the box is a, um, a bonus, which are these two... Um, they're called Spread Your Wings and Fly by For a Better Day Etsy.com. And what this is, is um, the little extenders that you put on your face mask to help it not be so tight. And that's what these are. And they were made for nurses, but anybody can use them. And so um, Crochet Surprise owners decided to put those in the box as well a great idea right now when people are actually wearing their face masks and sometimes they're uncomfortable because they're too small. Also they're sending out Choose to Shine Sunflower Seeds by Crochet Surprise, uh, wrong side, Crochet Surprise, and these are for you to plant and watch grow. I love sunflowers. I used to have some but I don't anymore. So let's look and see what's in the Crochet Surprise box. This is a crochet net bag, and that was why I had to use the keyword bag last week. 
Um, I thought that was appropriate for this, but it's a cute, cute bag. It's not difficult to make, and there are some photographs here that will help you work through it. It's just so cute. I used to make lots of bags like this. I just, I gave them all away. I don't have any to show you, but I've crocheted lots of these bags. And what's really nice is the yarn that they're sending, and they're sending 24-7 cotton in the colorway charcoal. Beautiful color. And this, of course, as you know, if you're a Lion Brand fan or if you've ever bought it, it's, um, tw their 24-7 yarn is 100% mercerized cotton. It is washable and dryable. So if your bag gets dirty, you can just throw it in the washing machine. And I love this yarn. I'm going to do something special with it this week, so I'll let you all know about that. So anyway, there are three skeins in the box and ready for you to use. So uh, in the box will be three skeins of this, the pattern, and the extras that I talked about. All that will be in the cro crochet surprise box. So let's turn the camera to the computer and find out who won this week's crochet surprise box. Here we are with our camera pointed toward the computer. This is last week's URL address. That's what you need to use the random comment picker for YouTube. I filtered duplicate users and I also have a specific text that I want to be in the comment and that was the word bag. So I saw everybody pretty much did that. Whoops, here I'm trying to touch the screen. This is a computer. <laughs> That's like me today. It's Monday after a long weekend. Okay, so we had 312 comments with the word bag. So let's go over and find out who wins the crochet surprise box with the crochet net bag instructions and materials inside. The winner is Kathy Miller. And Kathy Miller is, um, let's see if she, and I might have to order a bag from Joe. Love the ones you make. Thank you for sharing. So thank you, Kathy, so much for your kind words. You are the winner of the crochet surprise box this, this month. Okay, Kathy Miller, you are the winner of our crochet surprise box. And you know the drill. If you watch my videos, you know that you have to send me your uh, mailing address and just email it to me at genie at onthehookcrochet.com. And that address is down at the bottom of the um, notes below so you can see how to spell genie there. I know y'all love to look at Joe's bags. They, she is a special seamstress who makes custom project bags for um, people that watch my videos. So I'm excited for uh, the next three bags and she's going to show those in her video right here. Hi, it's Joe with Joe for Totes and today I have three bags to show you. Um, these were just really fun bags to make. The first one goes to Angie, who is in Aurora, Colorado. And Angie was very uh, specific about wanting white spaces on her bag. And when she first told me that, I had to kind of wonder what it was. And so she sent me some pictures of bags that she had really liked that had some white space. And one of the bags had a blue and white stripe that went horizontal which normally I would put this vertical, I think, but I, horizontal just worked great for this bag. She liked blue and white and hot pink and baby pink, and she wanted a, a little denim on her bags. So she has two side pockets, and the top one is denim. She liked pink flowers, so I incorporated that. And then for her pocket, she also liked uh, polka dots. <laughs> so I put polka dots on her pocket, and this is her medallion, which I thought was very, very pretty. And on the inside of her pocket is a hot pink fabric. And then the binding is a hot pink, the same hot pink fabric for the top of the bag. I decided on uh, Angie's bag to um, try to use the canvas duck that I use for the bottom. So this is a navy blue canvas duck. It's very durable and it doesn't show dirt very much. But I thought I would try it on the handles and I really, really like it. So I made another bag that I'll show you in a minute that's also got the uh, duck canvas for the candles, for the handles. Uh, again, it's very durable and it doesn't show much dirt, but I put this little uh, hot pink stitch on it, decorative stitch. And so really the only thing she wanted um, was a, a, an outside zipper to put all of her stuff in. And so I made that with some baby um, pinks and uh, the little stitch marker has a little lamb on it, and it's got navy and a little pink uh, 
little bead on it. And uh, then it's got the same fabric that I use for the inside of the pouch as the binding around the bag. So the inside is just real plain. There's nothing on the inside other than her stitch markers that everybody gets. And um, I also purchased some new snaps. And these are really much better than this. I mean, the ones I've been using are good, but these are really amazing. So I've ordered a whole bunch of them. So all the new bags will have on this will have these new snaps that are thinner than the other ones. And they're not as precise as meeting and they click and they're together really easy. So this goes to Anne in Aurora, Colorado. And I think she'll really like it. It's really a cute bag. Turned out really, really pretty. The second bag goes to Sandy, who lives in Windsor, Connecticut, and she wanted hummingbirds. So she found this fabric, which had a much larger design in it than I think either one of us thought. So I tried to piece together some of the fabric to make the design where you saw most of the hummingbirds and not much else. <laughs> so I use the same fabric on the sides. Uh, for a hummingbird on the bottom, a hummingbird on the bottom of this side, and then the flowers that are also on the fabric for the top of the uh, two side pouches. Uh, for the zipper pull, I used the little end of the hibiscus flower, which one of these flowers is, and so that was on the same fabric as well. So I think I used just about every scrap of this hummingbird fabric to make this bag, and so this is the back of it. And you can see a lot of the hummingbirds were able to be incorporated into that piece of fabric. And then on the front, the medallion uh, just was so pretty. Let me see if I can get a clear picture of it for you. But it just turned out so nice. And then she wanted a zipper for the top. And uh, I found a color that coordinated with the bag background. And I used the same fabric for this binding as I did the inside of the pouch and the handles. So I did not use the canvas duck on these hand handles. Uh, I didn't have, I didn't think black would look so good with this one, so I just used the, the matching or coordinating fabric that I also used on the binding. And then she just wanted the one zipper in on the inside of the bag, and so there was some flowered material that I have that has all the same colors as this main hummingbird fabric, so I thought it turned out really cute. And then she has a zipper pull on the inside and the stitch markers as well. And uh, there's her stitch markers. So I think uh, Sandy will really like this bag. It turned out really, really cute. Then the last bag, of, bag I want to show you uh, goes to Debbie, who lives in Skikesville, Maryland. I think that's how you say it. Now, let me just tell you something about Debbie. <laughs> Debbie was the last, not the last person on my summer list, but uh, I emailed her a couple of times to let her know I was getting ready to make her bag and you know, over a month or two, I'd never heard back from her, so I thought, well, maybe she just changed her mind. But that was a little strange to me since this is her second bag, and she wanted it exactly like the first bag, only larger. So we, you know, we'd email back and forth. Well, anyway, she finally sent me a Facebook message saying that she thought it would be time to get her bag, and I said, I'm so glad you let me know. So I say that to say this. If you think that it should be time for your bag to be made, or at least shown on Jenny, uh, Jeannie's, uh, and it has been made, please send me an email and ask me, is my bag ready yet, or are you getting ready to start it, or where am I on the list? I'll be happy to respond to that, uh, because I would want to know. <laughs> so this is for Debbie, and Debbie um, wanted the same fabric, so I just ordered it from the same uh, website as I had ordered before. Actually, I ordered this from Etsy. And uh, so it's a yarn ball, all different colors. It's a very colorful bag. And so her, let me just show you her stitch marker. I thought that was very pretty. She wanted a bag that was 14 by 14 by five. And I think this is a really nice size bag. It's not that much more uh, difficult to make. I think this probably is gonna be the largest bag I make from now on because it's very do doable. The bigger ones like 16, those are not so easy with my little machine. So she wanted a front pocket that everybody gets. And on the inside, I use some fabric that is very similar to the colors that she has in all these yarn balls. And then she wanted a back pocket. So no, no snap on the back pocket, just 
something to put, I guess, papers or books or something in it, notebooks that would manage that very well. She can certainly put a bottle of water on the sides if she wants to. Now I use the black duck canvas on the bottom of her bag. <clears throat> and then I use the duck black canvas on her uh, handles. And I have this fabric, uh, this fabric, this um, this thread that's multicolored. It's got all the same colors as the yarn balls on this black uh, bag fabric. So it just matched great. I thought that turned out very, very nice. And then on the inside, she wanted a snap top. And on the inside, she also just wanted one inside zipper pocket. And I had enough of this fabric left to make it out of the same, <laughs> put the same fabric as the outside of the bag. And then, of course, she has this little zipper pull. It's got a pink and a turquoise. Those are the main colors on these balls and the main colors that I used on the bag on the outside as well. So I thought it turned out really cute and um, it's got a really nice snap on the top. And she has the stitch markers that everybody gets. And um, so that one goes to Debbie and I'll be happy to send all these out. Um, I think the next time they collect uh, mail is gonna be Tuesday. So uh, again, I mentioned this last week but if you want to see more of my bags and get an idea if you want one or what you would like in one, if you know you want one, then you can go to my Facebook page and that's Joe, the letter four totes, or I actually post pictures of bags to Pinterest. So that again is Joe, the letter four, Joe four totes. And I'm the only one out there with those, with that name. So you should be able to find me pretty easily. So until I see you next time, I hope you're doing well and staying safe. Bye. Anyway, I hope y'all enjoyed my video today. So, like the video, subscribe. You can also share it. And I also put this out on my Facebook group. So if you're not a member of the group, please sign up. And also sign up for the community. Now, I sent an email out yesterday for this Millie's Lace pattern. And it goes to all my community members who have sent me their email address. And when you do, then you get... Uh, the first notice of the pattern being released. You also have an email that comes to you and it will have a special discount to use in my Etsy shop for any pattern at all that you see in there. So you're welcome to use that for as many patterns as you like during the time frame and it expires on September 12. So be sure to use that. As soon as you think you might want a pattern, go ahead and do it so you can use the discount code. And also, if you haven't signed up for the community, sign up today, and then tomorrow I'll be sending out a reminder email to all the community that I did send out the discount, so be sure to use that. If you've already seen it, you can just delete that email, but uh, that's for people that maybe didn't see the email, or they deleted it, or I have a lot, a lot of emails come by me, and I, sometimes I forget to look at them. So it's just a reminder email. So you will be on that list if you sign up today and you will have the discount for any pattern in my Etsy shop. So I hope you have a wonderful day. Have a great Labor Day. And I'll be back either tomorrow or the next day with another video. And we're going to talk about a huge giveaway that I'm doing for my 8,000 subscriber um, goal that I reached. And it's a wonderful thing. Y'all have been so supportive. And uh, so I've made it to 8,000 subscribers and I'm going to do something special for y'all this week. So I'll be putting out a special video for that. So join me then when we talk about what's on the hook. <laughs>